How wonderful it is when people live together in peace and harmony. It is as refreshing as a cool rain on a hot summer day. It is God's blessing for life now and life forever. Thanks be to God. Let us worship. And let us pray. Creator God, we come here today grateful for the love that you have shown us in Christ. And secure in the faith that we live surrounded by your love. We seek a new understanding of your will for all humanity, recognizing that we share that common birth as your creation. Open our hearts to a greater love, such that all may be embraced by your grace. We come professing this simple faith that you are God and in you all things are possible. Amen. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. In the reading from Mark's Gospel, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was at, by the lake. And then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? 
Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and waiting loudly, wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. two gospel stories illustrate how faith is challenged in times of crisis and how faith is important in times such as these. In both of these stories a parent appeals to Jesus to heal their child. In the Matthew story the story is about Jesus. A Canaanite woman asks Jesus to help her demon-possessed daughter. She is Canaanite, non-Jew. And that's significant here in this story because this may be one of the first times that Jesus has been uh, challenged by a, a non-Jew, uh, a non-member of his community. So at first Jesus ignores her and then he seems to be mean to her, treating her as someone unworthy of his help. This strikes us as rude and even hateful. In this age of racism, we might even see his behavior as racist. This doesn't feel like Jesus, so I wonder what are we to make of this story? First, the woman doesn't let it go. She kneels and pleads with him, even demands it. That he uh, respond to her and when Jesus denies her appeal claiming he's only interested in his own people she challenges him to practice his faith the story presents Jesus as learning from this woman it seems to me that the gospel writer presents Jesus as transitioning to an inclusive ministry Jesus finally recognizes her faith and assures her that her daughter is healed. This lesson of inclusiveness is something the world needs right now. The recent protests of the Black Lives Matter movement are highlighting the fact that racism still exists. It still exists among the political leaders. It is still practiced by the State of Israel in its apartheid treatment of Palestinians. And it exists to some extent, even in the church. Jesus' acceptance of the challenge of the Canaanite woman reminds us that discrimination is not part of our faith. In the Mark story, Jairus pleads with Jesus to heal his daughter. But on the way, he's interrupted by a woman who touches his garment and is healed. That, that delays him, and before he leaves, he hears that the girl has died. But Jesus says, don't worry, just believe. When he arrives, they laugh when he says the girl is not dead. So he only takes his, a few disciples and the parents into the room. And they're the only witnesses to his words. Talitha kum, come little one, get up. 
This is maybe only the second time that Jesus raises someone from the dead. But the point Jesus seems to be making is that faith is important in our living, that it can make a difference. Faith in Jesus' teachings of inclusiveness, of peace and justice, of hope in the face of challenging times are more important now for our global society. We are left with this question. Who is challenging our beliefs about ourselves as Christians? This question has been put to us by uh, some of the protests in recent weeks. I would like to introduce you to you introduce you to a Palestinian Christian leader. His name is Archbishop Elias Shakur. Here we are. Uh, he's a three-time Nobel Peace Prize winner, or a nominee, not winner, but a nominee. Uh, and I just finished reading the, the book Blood Brothers, which you see on the screen there. Uh, in, in it, he describes his life and work to build bridges between Palestinians, Jews, and Muslims. He grew up in Palestine with uh, Jewish neighbors and Muslim neighbors, and they got along uh, great before the state of Israel was formed. Uh, and, and so he's challenging us to build bridges. And I was deeply touched by his life story and his faith in the reconciling love of Christ. He was born in 1939, and so that makes him the same age as I am. Uh, he was about 10 when the state of Israel was formed. Uh, he lived in a small village called Biram in the northern Galilee area. And in 1948, his family, along with all the members of the village, were forced to leave their homes. They expected to return, so they lived outdoors in the olive groves for a couple of weeks. And when they tried to return to their homes, they were prevented. So they moved to another village where they were welcomed. His family was Christian, but they had good relations with their neighbors, their Muslim and, and Jewish neighbors. He was a good student and eventually attended high school in Haifa. Uh, Haifa is a, a fairly big city on the coast of the Mediterranean coast. And then later in Nazareth, he attended uh, college. Uh, and, and after high school, he was uh, and after college, he was sponsored by the church to go to France to study for the priesthood. He returned and became a pastor of the church in a village just outside of Haifa called Ibelin. His work addressed the barriers to education that Palestinian children face. He founded a school in the Palestinian Palestinian village of Ibelin, near Nazareth and between Nazareth and Haifa. Uh, and this is this part of the school today. Uh, the school is he established uh, uh, the schools are elementary, uh, high school, uh, intermediate school and high school uh, are called Mar. Elias Institute and the, the unique, unique unique thing about these schools is that they're open to children of all faiths Christian Jewish and Muslim uh, and his faith and the reason for this school and the policy to accept uh, all students uh, is his life his faith and life mission are built on on uh, Jesus' call for reconciliation. So the story of Elias Shakur illustrates the hope he has in the reconciliation of people between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. 
and the Mar Elias school he established in Ibelin is based on this principle. Jerusalem, Seville, Jerusalem, which is uh, one of the organizations I belong to uh, and on the board of, uh, has organized an initiative which they call Kumi Now from Jesus saying to the uh, to G uh, Jesus saying to the daughter of Jairus, uh, Talithi Kum, meaning little girl, get up. <clears throat> I selected the Matthew story because it is the lectionary reading for today. The Mark reading is from last year, but I selected it because it is a story from which Sabil has chosen Kumi Now, uh, the, the Kumi Now title for their program. And uh, you'll see on the screen uh, a number of uh, programs, webinar programs that uh, you can uh, view and join uh, through the month of August. They've been doing them through the month of July and and I assume they will be continuing into September. Uh, so you can get on it at this uh, uh, webinar address. Kumi Now is an inclusive call for justice which has gathered a group of over 50 organizations calling and working for nonviolent action to achieve a just peace in Palestine and Israel. It's a resource for learning and, and a call for action. In other words, it's a call to rise up, as Jesus said to the, to the girl. Sabil is hosting weekly video gatherings to bring our, our activists around the world together with these organizations in Palestine working for justice and peace. They, they're on every morning at uh, 11 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. I should say not every morning, every Tuesday morning. And uh, I joined one in, in uh, July 21 uh, with uh, Bishop Elias Shakur. You can learn more about his work and the work of the Mar Elias uh, School on the website that is here on the screen. Now we're going to uh, meet him uh, in this video uh, and he'll say a few words about what he's he's been doing. Good morning everybody. It's great to be lined up with you and to speak with you all without seeing you. I wish you could come and be with us so we could have a personal exchange about experience, about faith and perseverance. So it's a pleasure to be contributing a little bit with my witness for Sabil and for the work we are doing in Galilee with Palestinian Arabs inside Israel. Indeed, with the Sabil, I had a very long experience. I remember when we started in Jerusalem, I was honored and pleased to be the co-chair of Sabil with Naim Atik. I knew that he was the boss. I knew that he deserved to be the boss. And I was only wanting to be a servant in all this enterprise. So with the time going on, I got very, very busy with building the school, trying to deal with the college, and uh, they choose another coach chairman. So I was degraded, third place, last place. Wherever I was, I was happy because I was working with Naim, a man of God. With the time going, I often attended their annual conference. And instead of teaching people anything, I was learning much more than what I taught. Your presence in Jerusalem and elsewhere in Palestine was very meaningful for us. It was 
encouraging our hope to continue and our smile to shine. And this is what I am, for example, trying to do all the time with my 3,500 students in Mar Elias Education Institution. The only thing I ask them, when you see me with you or around you, give me a smile of hope. And this smile of hope is what we need, we Palestinians, because everything is made for us to lose hope, to lose the smile. But the more we are pressured, the more we have a strong smile of hope. And that's why I agreed this morning to speak with you. Maybe with what I will say, I will find an encouragement or another sign encouraging my smile of hope. Um, could you please tell us more about your journey with, um, with the school, how it started and where we are now? Well, the school is a long story of love. I started in 1980. All I wanted in the beginning was to have a small, excellent high school for the children of Abilene. I never thought of anything else. I had a vision to have a school where I can welcome everybody. Not a normal, usual school, but a school open to welcome everyone who was born baby, Christian, Muslim, Druze, and even Jews. And what was special about the school? In my dream, that is still a dream, but I hope it will be once implemented, is to save few places for two or three children from each Palestinian refugee camp in Gaza and in the West Bank. This is up till now impossible because of the political factor. They cannot come here. Or we are not allowed to have them. It's very complicated. So I focus myself on Galilee. And I have only the vision, the Lord has the plan for me. And we started with 80 children aged 13, 14 years old, and with four teachers, one lady and three gentlemen. Now we have over 200 faculty members. Most of them, maybe 80% are young ladies, and the rest are men. This is the big evolution, the great change in our society towards uh, women promotion. And we are proud to see how faithful and dedicated are women in their work in the school. Our school is, is considered to be among the best in Israel. Uh, and that is concluded from the governmental exams, the Bagrut, that our children have to go in, like all other schools in Israel. And very often, we are first in Israel, for example, in the Hebrew language. Uh, three years ago, we were first in mathematics, in chemistry, and in biology. We have students who are excellent, who when they finish, they join universities, and now they are key persons in the society. For the last one was a person who just returned back from Washington, where he was specializing in heart surgery for two years. And he's, he come back now, he's coming back. There are another person in Israel like him and the two only persons who can make these very special operations. We have other examples. We have even religious leaders, uh, Muslim religious leaders. We have some students who became pastors. And all of them try to be 
a key person in their society. The greatest consolation I have is when I go anywhere to buy or to do or to, to meet, I find alumni from Maria's Education Institution. A few years ago, I had to go in a, to have a surgery in my neck after the operation. When I was in the operation arena, I woke up and I was surrounded by 11 doctors. Nine of them were old students from Marlias. Marlias is no more one man's dream. It is my vision, but it is many people's work on all levels. It's a community uh, interest. Yeah. I wish you could come and see. You could come and share. You could come and be mingled with our students and try to feel the affiliation they have to the school. One point that was very well uh, noticed by the alumni. Whenever I see them, they say, Abuna, we miss the 10 minutes talk of the morning. I used to gather all the students in front of the school and address them for 10 minutes. That was the morning talk. And they still remember, they still wish they could have that again. One thing we were not able to, to succeed in so far, it's to organize the alumni, to have an alumni association. We were not able to do that so far. I don't know why, but we have to examine. So that is uh, just part of that webinar. Uh, and these are the links that I referred you to earlier. And I'll, uh, if you want to get those uh, later from the recording, you can probably uh, do that. The offerings, uh, as usual, can be made uh, by PAR or email transfer, mail, and the donation for Lebanon you can find on the United Church uh, website uh, here. Let us pray. We dedicate these gifts and our lives to you, O God, in thanksgiving for your great gift of Jesus, in whom we know an inner peace that is beyond our human understanding. Strengthen and empower us with the Holy Spirit to be bearers of this peace wherever we go. Amen. And let us pray. Ever loving God, throughout our lives we have received the promises you give that you are with us. We thank you for the promise that you will hold us up, that you will pull us through storms, difficulties, and disasters. Indeed, we have faith in the promise that you love us and invite us to be partners with you in this world that includes both challenges and treasures. May we remember that deep in our hearts your presence is with us always and be willing to share your love. COVID-19 continues to spread around the world with a continuing high number of cases in some places. Restrictions continue in many places, but we are thankful for cautious decisions to move into more open phases. We are glad to hear that with a very low, that there is a very low number of confirmed cases in Gaza and schools have been able to restart in the past few days. Healing Lord, we pray for all those who continue to be affected by COVID-19. We continue to pray for all the medical staff who work tirelessly to deal with those worst affected, putting their own lives at risk in the process. Be with staff and students as they make plans to safely return to the classroom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord of mercy, we were grieved to learn on Tuesday, the uh, 4th of August, that an explosion rocked the Lebanese capital, Beirut, causing almost complete destruction of the port area and a very large number of deaths and injuries. The people of Lebanon were already struggling to deal with high levels of COVID-19 and poverty, especially among Syrian and Palestinian refugees. O oh God, we bring to you the, those who mourn, and we ask for your comfort and healing to those who are injured, and shelter to those who are homeless. Give strength to those who are working now to rebuild the shattered lives of the people of Beirut, and protect those who are vulnerable, especially at this time of coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We long for wisdom to live safely and faithfully in these times. We are comforted that you know the fears we have, and we pray that we may find hope in the grace of your love and forgiveness. May we continue in faith to be the people you have called us to be, and to serve you in the way of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us go in Jesus' name to bring love and justice into a world in need of peace and healing. The grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Go in peace.